Hey, Eagle fans, your Statesboro Walmart is your one-stop shop for all your Georgia Southern football and game day needs. Pick up your GSU sports gear here. We have t-shirts, hats, tote bags, koozies, stadium bleacher seats, car spirit flags, wall pennants, beads, and more right here at the best prices in town. Also, don't forget, we can handle all of your tailgating needs with our great food trays, baked goods, and fresh, high-quality meat, seafood, and chicken. Walmart. Save money. Live better. Walmart. On this week's show, Georgia Southern football coming off an impressive victory at Troy gets ready for a trip between the hedges to Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. We'll hear from both sides, and we'll also take a look at the men's and women's basketball teams both in action. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles next. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined as always by the Georgia Southern beat writer and sports editor for the Statesboro Herald, Mike Anthony. And Mike, coming off what I would have to consider one of the most impressive games, if you take out the first 10 points that they kind of spotted, Troy, one of the most impressive games on both sides of the football that they played, a little old school keep away game. And Georgia Southern knocks off Troy on the road 45 to 10, just the way you want to do it as you get ready for the Georgia Bulldogs coming up this Saturday. But before we get into that, let's reflect back on the Troy game. Well, Troy definitely one of the hotter teams in the Sun Belt. They had scored 41 or more points in three consecutive games. The three and six record maybe disguising a little bit uh, the kind of team that the Eagles were going up against. Anytime you go on the road in conference play, it's going to be tough. Georgia Southern learned that the hard way at Appalachian State. But as you said, aside from the first couple of minutes of first offensive play, that looked like the most, not complete effort, but just well-prepared Georgia Southern team that we've seen all year. The Troy game, uh, they, they go hurry up, they pass it a lot, two things that Georgia Southern struggles with a little, and that's the best that the Eagles have looked in a couple of years defending that, just never really giving Brandon Silvers, a Troy quarterback, any time to throw. Uh, coming up with a couple more interceptions, this has turned into quite the opportunistic defense for Georgia Southern, and as soon as they gave the offense the ball, the offense made it very clear that they weren't going to give it back to Troy, holding on to the ball for 42 minutes, 55 seconds, and putting up 45 points along the Way. That's right. Well, that's the way. The recipe to beat a team like the Georgia Bulldogs, keep it out of their hands, keep the clock running and shorten the game. Let's get into the Georgia game. Your thoughts. Georgia comes in. This is probably the most beatable Georgia team. Georgia Southern's had a chance to play uh, in the history of the two. 14 and a half points is what the spread is right now. I don't believe it's ever been that close. Usually it's off the boards. Your thoughts on the Eagles' opportunity here Saturday between the Hedges and Athens? Well, it is the most beatable Bulldogs team the Eagles have ever faced, but that's speaking uh, relatively. Uh, most of the time, just as the schedule happens to put it, Georgia Southern goes up to Athens. So many times before, they've run into a top 10, even top 5 Georgia team. This year, not the case, not even close to the case. They're unranked. Their offense is struggling in the past. That's been what has been the backbreaker, especially in the second half. They've had an all uh, an all SEC quarterback, a pro style quarterback who might end up in the NFL, throwing 15 and 20 yard uh, chunks of yardage at a time in the passing game this year. That's the one thing that Georgia can't do. So if Georgia Southern's defense can put out the same effort and get that ball back in the hands of the offense, I think that last week against Troy was some good practice. Troy, for as much time as the defense spent on the field, they didn't give up the big play and Georgia's defense Far too athletic, in my opinion, to give up too many big plays unless they just run themselves out of position. So the Georgia Southern offense, they've got to be ready to get that almost three yards in a cloud of dust. Keep those chains moving. Keep their offense on the field. I know that Coach Willie Fritz, one of his favorite sayings is that his defense plays really well when the offense is on the field. So if they can do that again, dominate time of possession again, it will be the Eagles' best chance to pull off this in-state upset. All right. Well, we had a chance to hear from both sides of the football. We have the uh, Georgia Southern side, as well as Mark Rick, giving us what he feels is going on between Georgia and Georgia Southern coming up Saturday. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, you know, majority of our roster is, is from the state of Georgia, so it's a big game for, for most of the guys from Georgia. Uh, we're excited, but we're, just, we're treating it like any other game, um, just preparing the same way we've been preparing all year. They're a good football team. They're um, very athletic receiver. Got a lot of speed at receiver. Quarterback, uh, he's, a, he's a big kid. He's got a strong arm. Uh, offensive lines is pretty good, and you know everybody talks about losing Chubb this year, and 
that unfortunate injury, but they got some other backs behind him who are pretty good, um, running the football really well. You know, they, um, they're, they're not bad, a lot better than I think a lot of people think. It's a great opportunity to play them. Uh, we want to show them that we, we, we can play with anybody. We're all football players, and we, can, we do the same thing that they do, practice every day, work hard. So it's going to be a great challenge to play them. I think they'll we'll do some wildcat. I think they're going to, you know, run the ball at us without question. And, uh, you know, we got to do a good job of, of tackling and playing with leverage and, and, and making them earn their first downs instead of giving them easy ones. You know, I think defensively we, we've played extremely well for, for most of the season. And uh, uh, I've been uh, very impressed with us tackling and, and uh, you know, not giving up the big play. And, and uh, you know, nowadays with these offenses, it's hard to, you know, shut somebody out. But we, we played pretty darn well, particularly in the last couple of ball games. The difference in this team opened up the season against West Virginia to right now. Oh, I, I think there's quite a bit of difference. Uh, you know, we, we our offensive line I think is uh, is a seasoned group right now. I think uh, defensively we've settled on a rotation, and um, you know, uh, you know I, I think we're a different team right now. Uh, uh, you know, obviously. Uh, you step out of Sunbelt play, this is a, a team that's, you know, maybe as talented as any team in the country that we're, we're going to be going up against. So, you know, we, we got to be crisp and sharp in, in what we do. They do a great job of running option football. And uh, when you run option football, uh, defenses, excuse me, offensive teams that do what they do, uh, there's usually one or two defenders that they don't even block. They just, they read them. And uh, if they do one thing, then they they have an they have a counteraction for that, and and so because of that, um, they're going to have a blocker for every one of our defenders, and our defenders have got to be super disciplined in their gaps. They have to be able to play uh, cut blocks on the perimeter. They have to be able to defeat blocks and and make tackles. And everybody's got to hustle to the ball every single snap. Any given play, it can it can go to the house if you just don't handle your job properly and it puts a lot of pressure on a defense uh, so I mean they're averaging over 370 yards a game rushing they lead, lead they lead America in rushing yards per game and uh, it's going to be a well of a challenge for our defense. Toyotathon is on at Franklin Toyota. Hundreds of new Toyotas are Toyotathon priced. Save up to $7,000 off 2015 Avalons or get up to $6,000 off 2015 Prius. Find it at Franklin Toyota in Statesboro. Well, Mike, it's that time of the show where we put on our crystal ball and get everything set up and our thoughts on this week's game. I think we both thought the Troy game would be a little bit closer than it was but we both figured Georgia Southern would score about what they did. We just weren't sure that the defense would play as well as they did. Now we got Georgia coming up. The odds makers have this as about a 14 and a half point spread. Your thoughts on how you think this game will play out? Sandy? Well, I thought that last week was going to be a little tighter, although I will take credit for saying that Georgia Southern was going to get the Troy offense out of sync by keeping the ball. They did that to leaps and bounds above what anybody could have expected. That's going to be the plan again this week, regardless of how uh, good or bad the Georgia offense is playing. This is still a team full of highly regarded recruits, guys who have shown they can do it in the past. Right now they're a little out of sync, so hopefully the Georgia Southern offense can once again keep the ball, uh, keep things that way. It's going to be tough to gain yards, though. This is a very fast, very experienced Georgia defense. I think that they've been watching nothing but West Virginia and Appalachian State uh, uh, film. Those teams definitely showed how to shut down the option. They do run a little bit different base sets, so it'll be different looks, but they are fast enough and attacking enough. I really think it's going to be a problem for Georgia Southern. I'll agree that this is going to be the closest game uh, yet in the series, but I just don't think that I can call for the upset. I think that, as usual, this is tight at halftime. Not like usual, it stays tight into the fourth quarter, but in the end, Georgia just a little bit too much. They hit one or two big plays. I like the Bulldogs 27-21. 27-21. All right, I'm going to go ahead and be that guy, you know, to put on my Georgia Southern cap and wave a pom-pom, but I think the Eagles come out on top in a defensive struggle, 16-14. to Young Way Koo is going to come through with some field goals there, and the Eagles 
pull off the biggest victory in Georgia Southern I'll, history. I will gladly spend next week's episode just eating crow while you talk <laughs> if that happens. All right, well, before we go, let's talk a little bit about how the basketball teams are looking. Now, right now, the guys are uh, getting ready to take on Auburn. They played Ole Miss pretty well uh, earlier this week and then uh, over the weekend picked up a big victory um, against Weber. Your thoughts on how Georgia Southern's uh, men look, first of all. Well, a lot of question marks out there for the men's team. Only two starters returning, only four guys who even saw the floor last year on the roster this season. Mike Hughes, Jake Allsmiller, they're going to play vital roles this year after being role players last year. They've looked good so far. This team as a whole looks like it is not shy about shooting the three-pointer, 40 of them against Weber International. Enough of them went down that that made it a runaway victory. The real test, though, came against an SEC team in a hostile environment against Ole Miss, a team maybe not at the uh, top of the uh, SEC, but still a team with plenty of athletes, plenty of scorers. Georgia Southern with all those freshmen, all those sophomores, they got their first real test. And even though they lose by 10, I think they responded very well. A lot of fouls being called. They're going to have to learn to play with these new touch fouls that are supposed to be being called all throughout the NCAA. But they did a good enough job of finding some streaks, hitting some shots. A few more go down. Maybe it's a different story. But you've got to be impressed with what you've seen from such a young team given the way that people usually progress, freshmen and sophomores especially, if they can stay at that level of play, that level of discipline, I think this could be a much more dangerous team than the rest of the Sun Belt Thanks. All right, well, as for the women, Kip Drown getting things underway as they host Lipscomb, a pretty good Lipscomb team. They end up losing by 11, but it looked like there was some room to be optimistic about this season, especially compared to how poorly they played last year. Well, speaking of three-pointers, Alexis Sam, she's going to be one of the main scorers for the Eagles this season. She gets all 15 of her points via the three-pointer. Patrice Butler coming off the bench, a solid effort from her. A lot of starters back, I think 11, uh, 11 returners from last season's team. So this is a veteran team, although they still have to go through the process of learning a new system. But Kip Drown's been a winner everywhere he's gone. I said the same thing about Coach Willie Fritz when he came in for football. It doesn't matter what style you run. When you've got 20 years under your belt and you've been a winner in almost every one of those seasons, I'm going to go ahead and listen to you. So with the experience of this team, the, the raw athleticism, and they're actually a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, uh, more lengthy than some of their uh, Sun Belt opponents, I think that Coach Stroud can get this team uh, whipped up. Sooner or later, some of these 10-point games are going to have to go in their direction. And when it does, they should be able to build off the momentum. All right, well, that'll wrap it up for this week. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Hope to see you again next week.